Hi, this is Dave. Today I'm going to show you how to beat grid a song in Tractor Pro 3 and some tips to help you along the way. So let's take a look. There are many different ways you can beat grid a song, but I'm going to show you some of the ways that I use. I've loaded up this beat from a remix set. The first thing you need to do is go into the advanced view of the deck. So you can do that by either double clicking until you get to this section here, or you can go into preferences, decks layout, and then advanced. The next thing you'll notice is these are all greyed out, so there's no cue point in here, which we need to change. And the other thing is these white beat grids here are not all even, as you can see there's two there. So our job is to make the beat grid match up with the timing of the song. If you have trouble seeing the beat grids, what you need to do is go to preferences and go to decks layout, and in the grid mode, you can choose from dim to full. As you notice there, they get thicker. But for my taste, I like to have it on dim. Then you can zoom into the first beat of the song. What you want to do is make sure that the beat grid is just before the peak of the bass drum. Once we've got that, we can click one. And down here, we can choose to go to grid. Now I'm going to zoom out so you can see that they all go even when I click the grid. So pay particular attention to this section here. So you can see they all go even. And you may notice on your screen that this one and this one is a little bit brighter than the others. That means it dictates the first beat of the bar. So to double check this, what you need to do is use the internal metronome to make sure it's absolutely accurate. So we go to grid, we can turn on our headphones, then when we press play, we can hear the tick. Now what we want to do is almost cover up the metronome sound. If it's out, we can use these buttons here to move the grid around. Now these ones up here will keep the spacing of the beat grid, but it will move the whole lot together. So if we move that to the right, you can see slowly it moves over. So now if we press play, you can hear it's massively out. So let's go back to one and you can put this on a loop and I'm just going to move that back until like that. If for instance it worked it out and you look at the beat grid and you notice that it's fine at the beginning but you go over to the end and they're actually off, you need to pay attention down here to the actual BPM. So if this is the case, you can either double click and change what you want to move it to, or you can use these buttons here, and that will slowly move it in increments like that. But if you know it, you can just double click and press 120, press enter, and you can see it's all shifted back. You can also use your mouse to scroll up and down. Um, not as accurate, but it is useful just to get a good idea of what it is going to be. So once we've done that, we go back to the beginning, Put on our loop and then we press play and you need to pay particular attention to the end of a song because that's when it will start drifting so what i'm going to do is take that off and using the s2 mark 3 here we have a grid button and instead of having to go down to the grid to use it we can actually just press play and hold grid then what we can do is move the platter And it's a good way to train your ears for beat matching as well. Just bear in mind, when you're using that technique, it only moves the grid as a whole and not in small increments. So if you were on grid, it would only be these two buttons here. It wouldn't change the BPM. If we now look at a whole song over on deck B, it hasn't got any beat grids at all. The first thing I would do is scroll to the first actual beat of the song. It may not be the first note of the song, but it will be the first beat. So if you listen to this, There's no actual beat, so I'm going to scroll all the way to the first part of the song. So here, that is my first beat of the song, my first bass drum. So I'm going to zoom in just to make sure. And again, I'm going to get it as close as I can to that peak. Now, what's going to happen is I want to get it to 
this part here, but the beat grid is there. So if I press um, a cue point now, it's going to snap to what Tractor thinks the beat grid is. So we need to remove this function. So if I remove that cue point, and up the top here, we're going to remove snap. That means I can now place anywhere I want a cue point. So bear that in mind, and then I'm going to do it just before the peak, so there. And I'm going to press number three, and I'm going to change that to a grid. And I'm going to zoom out, and I'm going to take a look to see if it's even. The first thing I'll do is use the move rotary and just scroll along, and I'm looking for this beat grid to match up with my bass drums. So move it along and it's all in line, and I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna press play and grid so we can hear the tick. Okay, and I'm happy with that. One thing to know on broken beats is that sometimes it will only work out every other beat because it could be a break beat, a two-step beat from garage or something like that. So a way to correct that will be down in grid, we have a divide and a times two. And a lot of the times when it works out drum and bass, for instance, it will actually work it out as half time. Therefore, if we press sync, it wouldn't be accurate. So what we need to do is go down and times two and therefore the beat grid is correct. But just to double check these two together, I know they're not the same genre, but you know, everyone's friends here. We can do 160 and I'm gonna press sync on this one and number three and sync on this one as well. So we can press play at the same time. And that sounds pretty good to me. The last thing we're going to look at is how to beat grid a song that doesn't have an obvious beat or it could be changing a bit like Motown or jazz or anything that's been played live, it will start to drift. So I've got a vocal here and I'm going to manipulate just a little part of it so I can use it in sync with other songs. So let's just take a quick listen. Maybe he's right. Maybe there is something the matter with me. <laughs> so I'm just literally going to take that. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to take the first bit of the speech and there is no beat grid here so I want to turn snap off it's just going to work for the purpose of four beats so the first thing I'm going to do is press one there and change that to grid then I'm going to do four beats just to have a listen maybe he's right maybe there is something the matter with me <laughs> maybe he's right so as you can hear if that was to be da 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 so it's not going to be in time. So we're going to try and manipulate this beat grid just to make this into something we can use over a beat. I've actually changed over to the S2 Mark II for a reason, because it actually has the in and out button, which we're going to use here. So I'm going to take off the loop here, and I'm going to make sure snaps off, which it is, and I'm going to press an in, and then when I've got to the bit that I'm happy with, I'm going to make an out point. Maybe he's right. Maybe there is something the matter with me. <laughs> and I want to get it just before the <sighs> So I'm, I'm going to wind back there and I'm going to press out. Now this is going to make an inconsistent loop as per the beat grid. But for me, it's going to work. So press play. Maybe he's right. Maybe there is something the matter with me. Maybe he's right. And that sounds Maybe pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do now is manipulate the grid to match the actual loop. So we get onto grid. And we go down, and I want four beats on here. So one, two, three. So I want that line to be in line with this green part. There we go. Now we can take off that just to make sure Maybe. it works. Four, instant. Maybe he's right. Maybe there is something the matter with me. Maybe he's right. Maybe there is something the matter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this 70. I'm going to press sync on this one and on this one play this two three four maybe he's right maybe there is something the matter with me maybe he's right maybe there is something the matter with me maybe he's right okay and that is actually in time i'm looking for the first beat and the last beat and to me that works great 
This is something that takes quite a long time to get used to, and it is with practice that you will get the hang of it. There are some things that can't be beat gridded, but you can take sections. There are some things that can't be beat gridded at all, but that's when you use um, your ear and you may be able to do it manually. There are certain songs where actually will speed up halfway through the song. What you can do is actually set more than one beat grid, but it doesn't anchor it in the way that people want it to. Just be aware that it can't do everything that maybe we want it to. Let me just give you a quick demo just for a bit of fun to show you part of your world with some other bits and pieces. Thanks very much for watching this video and don't forget to tune in next time when I'll be looking at some more things you can do with Tractor Pro 3. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thank you.